Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy Thursday. Welcome to David Caruso Live on Facebook. I am so excited we are together again for another great conversation with two awesome, awesome people. I am so excited to welcome them to the broadcast in just a second. First, I wanted to give a shout out to our good friends at Wisconsin State Fair. I'm sure many of you have heard already just a couple hours ago at about 11 o'clock this morning, the official press release came out very sadly and somewhat maybe to be expected, I'm not sure, but headline 2020 Wisconsin State Fair canceled. A little statement from the press release says, today Chairman Yingling announced that for the safety of fairgoers, staff, vendors, entertainers, exhibitors, sponsors, suppliers, and the broader community, the 2020 Wisconsin State Fair has been canceled. Such a sad day for so many of us. I know we still have good things to look forward to, but I wanted to make sure that our friends, including Kathleen O'Leary and all of her team at State Fair, know that we are thinking of you. We know the last couple of months have not been easy and there has been a lot of hard work, deliberation and thinking going into this. So hats off to you. We'll see you again for another grand old State Fair next year. I for sure know that. So once again, welcome today, the one and only one of my favorite guys, Paul Bartolotta is with me and I cannot wait for this conversation. I know I've already gotten so many comments and notes from all of you tuning in. Um, and we are so happy that he has taken the time to join us. Finishing up the conversation today is one of the dudes from Scratch Ice Cream. This is gonna be fun. I got a pack of it delivered to me last night. So I'm gonna give you my little insider review, but of course, delicious. So stay tuned after I talk to Paul, Justin will join us. Karen, Adam, Judy, Cindy, Jamie, so good to see you guys. Lots of people already joining in. So to start off today on David Caruso Live is Paul Bartolotta. And many of you know him and he is so well known, not only in the restaurant industry for so many reasons, but throughout our community nationally and around the globe for so many wonderful endeavors that he's been a part of and influencing the restaurant industry in ways that are just way too numerous to list. Some of which we will talk about with him today, but especially here in Milwaukee and Wisconsin, we know him as the chef, co-founder and owner of the Bartolotta restaurants. Those restaurants include Bacchus, Downtown Kitchen, Harbor House, Joey Gerard's, Lake Park Bistro, one of my favorites, Mr. B's, Pizzeria Pacola, Restaurante Bartolotta, uh, The Rumpus Room, and at Cole's Corporate Campus. So I cannot wait. We're gonna bring him into stream with us now. Mr. Paul Bartolotta. How are you, sir? Is today Thursday? Is that what you said earlier in your introduction? Today's Thursday. I, I hope so. All the blur. <laughs> it is. It is. Are you talking to us from downtown? Yeah, I'm actually in the office. Nice. Nice. So I know, Paul, before we jump into all of uh, the news with Bartolottas and other things, uh, you also heard today about State Fair. Any Quick comment you want to uh, give a shout out to our friends there well it, it's 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 disappointing you you prefaced it well probably to be expected um these are really tough decisions for people to make uh so one thing's for sure um they erred on the side of safety i've been a big proponent of that uh, i think that is the most critical thing right now um you know, we're going to talk, I'm sure, a lot about the restaurant business and hospitality, but it, but life is way more important. So as a priority, um, I've always put that as, you know, family first and, and priority of safety. So it was probably a very difficult decision for them to make. 
Um, and we're living in a world that's so unpredictable that um, that it's difficult to know what is the right decision or wrong. So I don't I don't judge. I support any decision they make. And I'm sad for the people that were excited about it and for the public that's going to miss out on it this year. But they're going to be twice as excited about next year. So I know, you know, that's what I was thinking, too. Like, can you imagine what state fair next year is going to be like? I, I just think it's this crazy is as, of- as it normally is every year, right? <laughs> with maybe even a little more uh, craziness, but I agree. It's just so uncertain. And, and like you, they've been going through so much and, and it's just so much pressure and so much stress. And related to that, my friend, I wanted to thank you again here now virtually for joining me. I started David Caruso Live just with the intention to do something with my time right now and to spread some joy and to talk to people that I admire and just think um, are, are doing things that are so critical and important to our industry and our community. So I'm really, really appreciative that you took the time to say yes right away and to join us. Happy to be here. I'm actually honored you invited me. Thank you, David. Thank you. Olga's here, Dave Larson, good to see you. So many people already saying hello. So uh, before we jump in, I wanna also say Bartolatas.com. It's the place to go for lots of the uh, updates related to the restaurants and their special events and and all things Bartolatas. So check it out when you have time. But Paul, this is for me, one of the reasons I really wanted to talk to you because you know, I don't really know that much about your background. Obviously I've read up, but uh, in terms of us, we've never really talked that much about it. And I was just curious in a nutshell, you know, to hear a little bit about your story, your background. One of the intriguing things, uh, I grew up in Wauwatosa too, and I understand that's where your roots are. Indeed, that's where I'm living right now. So um, yeah, so grew up in Wauwatosa town american family family table is always the most important part of our environment and our family values uh and um i was going to waltos east and um probably not the most well-behaved kid i was an a student and things i enjoyed and i was a d minus student things i didn't enjoy (laughs) and uh and uh, my father said son you need to choose something you like and i my first job was at Balistrieri's on 68th Street as a prep cook wow. when I was 14. Uh, then I went on to work at the Chancery um, on State Street. Uh, when I turned 16, I could get a work per- a second, like a, a legitimate work permit. Uh, and then from there, um, I loved the environment. I Joe DeRosa gave me my first real uh, Jim Balistrieri and Joe DeRosa. And then um, I just remember loving the environment of restaurants and so I decided very early on, my dad, you know, asked me what I want to do. And I said, I love being in restaurants. And I said, I would like to be a chef. And he said, then be a chef because you'll only be good at what you're what you're passionate about. Wow. And so I then um, my sister was working for Tony May at the Rainbow Room in New York. And I went to visit her and Tony May had been bringing chefs from Italy to doing the Italian fortnights. Um, and when I was finishing up my, my, my junior and senior year of high school, I started working for John Marangelli at Marangelli's uh, up in Port, up on uh, Port Washington Road, up at Brown Deer. And um, he was my first real culinary maestro. And then uh, I went to visit my sister and the owner of the restaurant, Tony May, who at the time was running the Gruppo Ristoratori Italiani, an Italian restaurant group, uh, sent me to work in Italy. And I was supposed to be working in Italy for six months. And seven and a half years later, 15 restaurants from Sicily to the Alps. Um, I was there. And then from there, I became at 24 chef de cuisine of a two-star Michelin restaurant called San Domenico in Imola. Um, And they were members of Relais Chateau and Tradition et Qualité, which is two important French food organizations. So they sent me to work in France. And in France, I worked for... Roger Verger, Paul Bocuse, uh, uh, Michel and Pierre Toigro, Taiwan in wow. Paris, and I did my pastry school with Le Notre in, uh, in Paris. And then wow. I came back to open San Domenico, New York, uh, where the same owner, Tony May, had opened a version of the San Domenico in Italy in New York. Uh, it opened with three-star New York Times rating, kind of unprecedented. Um, and I stayed there for oh, three and a half years, 
And then I wanted to open my own restaurant. So I left and a week after I got outside and I said, wow, I'm a pretty good cook, but you know, I don't know anything about the business that are at. Like I couldn't even negotiate a, a rubbish removal contract or, or how you would negotiate a lease with an attorney or, oh, by the way, I forgot if I want to open a restaurant, I should probably think about raising money. <laughs> so, so, um, at that time, um, Levy restaurants, uh, recruited me to do some consult or Rich Melman recruited me to do some consulting in Chicago. And I had been all these years in New York and away in, uh, in Italy, in France that it said, said to me, I wanted to prove myself in two major markets. I wanted to be closer to my family. I'd been away a long time and we were a very closely knit family. So coming back to Chicago made sense. And I took over Spiaggia, which was the signature restaurant of Levy organization. Um, and I became a partner a year later. And then in 93, my brother was moving back from what had moved back uh, to New York. And he said, you know, we should do restaurants together. Um, and I said, OK. And then like a week later, he called me. He's like, I got this great spot. And I'm like, OK. And this is Sojo. So I drive up from <laughs> Chicago and it's like it used to be the Peter Piper Pancake House. Um, and uh, I used to skip out of mass on Sundays. Uh, and go uh -huh. pancakes. <laughs> but I always remember to stop home and take the missile at home to tell my parents, you know, it was a great service, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but and it was, right across, it was right across the street from the Chancery, which is now Jose's Blue Sombrero. And it is right. where today is Ristorante Bartolota 1993. Um, wow. And it was our first restaurant in 93. And Joe DeRosa became our first partner. And, wow. uh, and I mean, Joe DeRosa he asked us if we had raised the money. We really hadn't yet. Um, and I was doing quite well in Chicago and my brother had a baby on the way and he's like, you know, I really need to do something. And I'm like, okay, well let's do this together. And it was funny cause not that long ago I uncovered a bunch of boxes of letters that were correspondence with Joe and I, where I would write him letters saying, you know, Joe, you know, you and I should do something together. I'll run the kitchen. You run the front of the house. And my, one of my best friends, Matt Smith, um, has a bunch of letters that he also shared with me that sort of tell that story. And sure enough, there it is, Ristorante. And yes. so here we are 27 years later. And, you know, um, to my brother's credit, he saw the real market of Milwaukee. He identified incredible locations for us to do the restaurants. Um, um, you know, he was always the face of the company. Um, and, and so everybody knew my brother more than me. Uh, people maybe in the foodie community. Organization, the development of our culture, um, and and really, you know, the assembly of uh, of, a, of a great collection of people uh, wow. because it's people that make restaurants. It's not restaurants. Wow, that, that is was as so short cool. as I could go. I, I could go on for hours. No, no, no. And so many people are saying, wow, what an incredible background. So many people are proud to be a part of the Bartolotta organization. I, I'm reading the comments. And Love your story. I don't talk about this, to be honest with you. That's I really, why I wanted to know it, because we don't get to hear that from you often. No, and, and I will tell you, you know, probably, so my brother and I, we use these, we've always used these terms, art and economics. Heart, mind. Wow. Um, so the decisions that we make every day are sometimes it's all about making the right business decision. But if mm. all you do is do that, you got no soul. Right. If all you do is make the heart decisions that are like bleeding heart here, then you also realize that it's not sustainable. And so we, we talk about this, this friction, but I mean it in a good way that, that every decision has to be this, tug of war yes. between yin and yang, art and economics. And um, so for me, when I joined Levy, the hardest part was they were great business people that happened to be run restaurants. They were businessmen, Mark and Larry, super smart guys, maybe not the most foodie guys, but they were smart businessmen and they understood their market. And they wanted me to sort of come in and do the food and elevate their food stature. 
And that was a collision because I had people with clipboards and All you know, right. lab coats telling oh. me how I should run the, and I didn't, I still was thinking like a, like a chef, like an artist only. And they taught me about the business of the business. And it was, um, it was an incredible business education, but it didn't come without like strife because it was, I went, I was thinking about food and like great food and like right. what's the next dish. And for them, it was about business and, and not yes. that they were not dispassionate. They knew they needed better chefs and they were committed to elevating it. And I respect them a ton for that. I learned a lot. Um, and then I went on to do a restaurant with Steve Wynn in Las Vegas um, while continuing to build our restaurants here. And boy, in terms of elevating the standard, yeah, that was my restaurant at Wynn, my goodness. Um, I mean, it was, it was a monster. I, you know, I survived 11 years uh, with Steve <laughs> and uh, it was, um, I got my second beard award there. Um, yes. And it was a, it was just, it was, a, it was a great ride, but every day I went to that building, it was like going to school because I was around some of the smartest people, finance, you know, graphics, design, marketing, like really smart people. And yes. I've just always liked to feel as though I'm the dumbest guy in the room because then I know I'm learning. <laughs> you're absorbing. Well, you know, one of the things that I think is so neat about what you're pointing out is is not only is it about the heart and soul, which- I can't hear you, David. You can't hear me now. Let's make sure that you can hear me. Is Can you hear me? Uh-oh. I think it might be on your end. Can you hear me? Maybe. I have that tendency to break things when I talk a lot. <laughs> so I'm sure it was me, but I can't hear you. I apologize. I don't know how okay. that is. Hold on one second. I'm going to see if any viewers can just send me a comment if you can hear me. Because if viewers can hear me, let's see. Hold on. Hold on, peeps. Mm -mm, I can't hear. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to Yeah, do I don't hear thing. you, David. I'm sorry. Okay. Hold on one second. It's okay. I was doing a demo the other day, and for about eight minutes, the, the can, audio went out. So we have to accept this as part of our new reality. It's can you a, hear me now? It's the world we're living in. Can you hear me? Um, so, Paul, viewers can hear me, but you yeah. can't. Hello, David. I can't oh, hear you, man. David. I can't hear. You can hear him, but I can't. Yeah. So I don't know what went wrong on my computer here. Um, I don't know. And I can hear you. So let's see. Do you want to try to um, look at, I they say know. Chicago can hear you. Um, do you want Touching to, um, oh, uh, they can hear you, here. but you can't hear me. I don't see any, there's an audio underneath here. Right. Um, Paul, they can hear both no, of us. His, so. I can't hear David. They, apparently they can hear me. So yeah. Yeah, just bring your computer in here and that way I'll hear it. Sure. Yeah, we're going to try to log you Thank back Thank goodness in. there's somebody else here in the office. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, guys. We're going to get Paul back here. Don't worry. Okay, Paul, in the meantime. Hold on, I'm going to send okay, Paul a Okay, David, note. I have another can computer next to me, so I'll keep my audio here and I'll be able to listen to you there. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Can you hear me now? Ooh, now he's delayed. It's even a delay. Hold on, guys. We're gonna get So Paul, why don't you log out and try to log back in? Let me log back in. Yeah. Okay, viewers, hold on. I can log back in. You want me to log back in, David? Yes. Yes, log back in. I can hear you perfectly. Log back in. Hold on, viewers. He's going to be back. This is how it goes. <laughs> but it's such a good conversation, so don't leave us. Hold on. Paul, we're just getting to the good stuff. So he's going to log back in, and I'm sure it will be resolved. And, okay, here he comes. Hold on. He's back already. Hold on. Can you hear me, Paul? Ah, oh, we're back. Back at it. Oh. See, what happens when I get animated, even my scary, even my computer. Are you sweating? I'm sweating. Yes, I am. I'm like, oh my gosh. 
Also, I need some the of air that. Conditioning isn't even hardly that working. Here, oh, so. God, I need to turn it down to about 65 right now. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for holding in there with us. They're still here. But what I wanted to say is, you know, it definitely is all about the heart and soul. And what I love about your story that people are catching on to right now is that it's all along the way, the people that you met and the places that you worked and your family and every situation that you mentioned in your long history and your, part of your journey to getting to today, you all always paid attention and realized that you weren't great at everything and there were things you had to learn and absorb from all those people. And I just think that is the, the token of inspiration for people watching to take from that. I have to say something. I'm part of an organization called Mentor and it's Team USA that competes for the Culinary Olympics. So it's, you know, it's a nonprofit and such, but it isn't for, you know, you know, violence in the home or things like this. It's it's a culinary thing to help young chefs uh, compete and represent America, but also, you know, developing future talent. And I often speak at various engagements and things, and I have to say something, you know, we uh, mentor comes from mentorship. And we, at some point in our lives, anybody that has had any success, somebody opened the door just a little bit and it was up to us to run through it. And yeah. if we think about our lives, nobody gets anywhere alone. They get there because they have people that are teaching them and mentoring them and giving them opportunities. And I think about my list and I think of John Marangeli, Marangeli, and I think about Joe DeRosa, and I think about Mike Cudahy, and I think about all these people uh, that, and I can go on, I can think about Valentino, the chef of San Domenico, and so Tony May, I'd never gotten to Italy without him. And sommeliers like Henry Bishop at Spiaggia, wow. who just, you know, so I think back, Tony, uh, working with Steve Wynn, Mark and Larry Levy, um, and, and, the, and the team that I work with at Levy Restaurants, Allison Webb. That I've been able to learn from and that I connected with. Um, and and nobody nobody gets anywhere alone. That's so great, so great. I think your friend, or your friend, your sister and friend, Felicia is watching. So that's so great to see her. I love that. Caitlin uh, from Miss Harbor Yerish. House is watching. So many great people. Okay, so um, moving on, one of the things that, like you mentioned before, not all of us have really gotten to, to know you so well after Joe's passing. And um, obviously, we all uh, grew to love Joe in so many ways. And what I just really appreciate about um, you know, what so many people in your organization have been doing is kind of making sure that the legacy of Joe is always uh, somewhat in the forefront um, in things that are happening. But what are some of the things that you've been thinking about lately in your experience um, about your brother? Uh, never ends. He's over my shoulder. Uh, he's there every day, right there over my shoulder. Um, can you guys see that? Yes. I love that and, photo uh, of you guys. And I'm, gonna, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm actually going to do something really radical in just about a minute. Um, you know, the reality is... Um, Larger than life guy, impossible shoes to fill. Um, I feel like I've come into the market with a little bit of a a deficit because I just don't think people know me. And so um, it's very difficult, you know, to to live up to a, a, an idea or an image of somebody like my brother. I think it's quite honestly, I think it's impossible. So um, my brother and I, uh, grew up, we had very different life, professional life journeys. But as brothers, we were like this. And it was funny because all the people saw us as completely different individuals. And yet they didn't understand that when we would have vibrant discussions about our business, it was confusing. They said, my God, you know, they're like fighting. And it's like, no, that's how Italians <laughs> talk. Italians, that's, that's how it goes. And the other part of it was that there was, an, there, in a way, um, I had the advantage that my brother gave me the freedom to live an incredible life that was part of my destiny, right? And my vision and my dream. And at the same time, I was also able to be objective enough about our business here. So whenever my brother had real decisions to make, 
I got the call because I could, when you're the face of something, it's very difficult. When you yeah. can be one step removed, but equally as committed, you can also offer advice. That's what And if you cannot be in our business without being emotional. Right. It's about your heart every day. Yeah. And so, so I was sort of that consigliere. I was that guy that he would call. And I was also having a very different professional business journey, um, which gave me other experiences that I could then bring to our conversation. But living up to the image of my brother, I think it's impossible. So, you know, we grew, we came out of the same womb. We grew up at the same table. We, we, we've endorsed our whole life, the same values and whether like the consumers may not know it, but Joe and I have always lived by our tenants and our tenants that we, we argued about, we're always number one, we take care of our employees. And even now my number one job, even though it sounds a little off balance is I got to worry about the folks. I go to worry because Joe didn't build this company. I didn't build this company. The players on the field have been winning the game every day. It, you know, the people in our, we changed our office from our corporate office to our support office recently in terms of nomenclature. Why? Because we don't want to be looked at as a corporation. Right. We're here to support the success of the players that are on the field. Our job is to help them and say, what do you need? How can we support you better? Because we, we're about the people that do it every single day. And it's our job to get these people all the empowerment. The jet ski. So this process changes take time. But yeah. literally, if any of our staff is listening, and I hope they are, um, we miss you. We want you back to work. We want to help your families. Uh, you've made us great, you know, and you're the family. This is a picture, Joe, of a wedding um, that your team catered for me. It was so great. I mean, really, the people, like you said, always so professional, smiling, upbeat, Baby. ready to serve. It's the heart of hospitality like you can't believe. And right there in the very center in that blue dress is Megan. And she's yes. just one of my favorites. You and me both. And let me tell you something. <laughs> Nobody does events like you. <laughs> Nobody you. does events like you. I mean, Thank over you. the top. Um, We've had some fun ones. Can I just say been... one last one last thing about um, Joe, and then I want to talk about restaurants and events too. But I was really struck by this, and I just want the audience, again, getting to know you. This is one of the things that um, you said in a recent article, a part of this letter that you wrote to Joe. You are forever in my thoughts, chirping in my ear. There is a private place for you alone <laughs> in my heart. And I just loved that. Such a good guy. So I want to talk to you, sir, my friend, now can, about- Can I do one thing? You can, can do whatever you would like. One thing, yes. hang on. Let's be crazy. Hang on a second. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. I love this. He's taking us on the move, guys. Everybody you're, watch. You're in our offices. Nice. Hello, hello. Oh, the wall. There it is. Wow. And the and can't tell you how many times we've stood here and cried. Ah, oh. you know, all but, the memorabilia. And you know what? You can never encapsulate a life into something like this. But I wanted to make sure that you know there was Joe and Jen, and there was yes. Ristorante. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yes, um, we can see it. And then you know our partners. You know, Mike Cudde Mr. and Joe Cudahy. with his girls, which are his everything. Love them. And, you know, some of our teams. And I just love this picture of my brother. Oh, um, it's the best photo. Yeah. And uh, this was the opening of my restaurant in Wynn. And he surprised me and came out with my dad. It was the last time I had a cook, cook for my dad. Wow. And then, of course, my brother, always Mr. Immodest. <laughs> He's a pretty big deal. Oh, there it is. A big deal. Yes. On the wall. That's so cool. 
That so, is great to see. I'm so, so glad you took us on that little tour. That yeah, is I'm sorry, so awesome. I couldn't help that. And Lee, I'm sorry I took my mask off. <laughs> That's okay. I'm on, That's I'm awesome. On, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook Live. Come on. Yeah, you don't need a mask right now. <laughs> um, Okay, so restaurants, thank you for doing that. Let's talk a little bit about the restaurants. We've, we've named them, we've seen a few, but um, I know there's so much going on. We talked about Ristorante Bartolotta in 1993, such a great story. I love that place. It still is, I'm biased, um, one of my favorites. Um, so I, I also read, you said in a recent article, it was a difficult decision to cease operations, including curbside service at all Bartolotta restaurants, which I believe started on March 20th. So I, I know that this has been an incredibly difficult time. Right now on the restaurant side of things, is there something that we should be expecting? Do you have any kind of general timeline? I've heard maybe patios might open first. Uh, anything that's in process, I know a lot of things are in process, but okay, anything well, you wanna share. So my communications team would... No one wants to get back in business sooner than me. Right. Um, you know, this is we we went from 950 employees to 12 at significant pay reductions. You know, we had 20 salespeople in our events department. We're down to four. And it's mm -hmm. like a blizzard of information. And just deciding those 12 was just like heart wrenching. Right. Yeah. Thinking about what are the who are the right people for this particular moment, not who are the most important people necessarily even. But for this moment in time, like what do we need? So, you know, as we look forward, um, you know, we want to like Lake Park Bistro, for example, will be 25 this year in October. Wow. So so several years ago, Joe and I started on a plan to upgrade all of our restaurants. We started at Ristorante last year at 25 year anniversary. Then last year we did Bacchus at our 15th anniversary. And then this year was gonna be Lake Park. So it's just like, I mean, all these plans just, you know, poof. Yeah. So, so, so here's the answer. The answer is we're always gonna put the safety of our employees first. We are diligently working on so many of our um, on focusing on so many of our safety and and process protocols and a training and implementation plan so right. critical. You can have the best plan in the world, but if you do not train, execute, and follow it, it's not of any value. Yeah. Um, so so we had originally thought we would open. Um, um, Coles, which is not public facing, which we actually started this past week. Um, okay. um, but it's not, it's, it's a private campus. Um, right. we were thinking, you know, downtown kitchen, um, uh, maybe next, but it really depends on the occupancy in the building to verify that all the offices are up. You know, you're hearing a lot of mixed things about what people are doing in terms right. of when they're bringing people back. My niece is works in New York and now she's working on a laptop on our couch. And right. He's like, my niece is like, well, we'll be back in September. Um, other oh, people are like, uh, oh. other people, offices are saying 2021, big companies. Yeah. So we're not doing that. We're going to get back in the game. I want to be on the field, but I, I, I want to be patient enough to get a good look at the field. And I've sort of used the example. Clearly I'm no Aaron Rodgers, but I want to like get underneath the center have a play called and then look and see the field a little bit because we, we cannot afford to open, close and reopen. We just don't yeah. have the money. We're in the restaurant business people. I mean, people I think that every day we take this wheelbarrow of money to the bank. Where in the restaurant business? Where? Yes. So, so this is about survival. It's about, it's about finding a way to bring the most employees back possible mm -hmm. and operating not at who even thinks about profitability. I'm thinking right. about like just getting making out it. of the red, like getting yes. to black is a victory at this moment, getting to a point where you're not losing money to me is, is a, is a, is a plan because then I'll have employees working. 
I got 950 families that look to me. And so and I think Paul, you know, hearing that part of the strategy and what you're thinking about and going through with the team that you do have there, it is so important because like you said, you know, and I've read about things also that you're really interested in not being the first, but not being the last and getting to it with a, with a smart and focused and a, an approach where people will feel good, safe and, and having a good time and be able to experience the hospitality that your team is so well known for. David, I got to tell you, you know, we, you know, we don't, I, like I joke around, like my crystal ball is broken, right? <laughs> How's yours? You know? Yeah, shattered pretty much. Yeah, and a little cloudy these days, a little muddy. <laughs> um, so, so listen, we have got to, we also have to be honest, right? So we did a, um, we did a uh, town hall, virtual town hall meeting. We had hundreds and hundreds of employees that tuned in really encouraging to see their enthusiasm and desire to hear what's going on. Um, and, and, you know, the question is how and when, how and when, when and how, and the answer is we've got really, we have an excellent leadership team. I could not be more proud of our leadership team and had the amount of hours that we're putting in um, to be ready to do this right. Yeah. Thoughtful and deliberate. And so it's sort of like, Rethink your business model, reinvent what you're going to do. Think of things that we can do that create also excitement um, and then reopen and do it in a gradual way initially to get a lay of the land. Because as I said, the, the amount of resources are, are finite. They're limited. Right. We're just, you know, there is this impression, you know, I'm not, you know, a bank or Northwestern or, these big companies, you know, the brand that that we've built, while I have a lot of confidence that people will be a moment patient with us, but, you know, it's still a very competitive market in Milwaukee and we've got to get back in the game. And um, I'm not here to, to, to judge other people, whether we should or shouldn't rush in or not, or who's doing curbside. Everyone right. has got to do what they think is best for them at this moment. And yeah. um, we're sending out another survey to our employees to learn more and get their comfort level because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of apprehension also from our employees. So, yes. you know, by law, if I offer somebody a job and they decline it, I, they have to go on, they have to go off on employment because they declined. So I don't want to put my employees in that situation. I want to make sure they're, ready and willing and they're in the right mindset and i need to be able to let them know we've got their back we're prepared for their safety and we also need to make sure that the consumer that there is real legitimate consumer demand so right. you had said patios harbor house um, um mr b's in brookfield uh ristorante and well what a beautiful patio i love that look at that <laughs> and there are people you know, there there are people there's people there. Oh. Now, Paul, I know Maria's watching too. And I just want to right here say that I want to be first in line to meet you and Maria on that patio right there at Harbor House. Uh, <laughs> consider that invitation delivered. Good, good. It's I'm excited there. for that. Good, good. Now let's talk about also um, events. This is a huge part of what your organization does. Um, besides the restaurant locations, you operate events and catering outlets at Discovery World, the Grain Exchange, of course, the Italian Community Center, ICC downtown, so many great places, the Peck and Bushel Barn, which is another fabulous place too. And not to we, mention, not to mention all the event rooms in all of our restaurants, the Red exactly. Room at Mr. B's, the Lake Rooms at, 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 um, at Lake Park Bistro, um, the, the 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 captain's room at Harbor House, uh, the, uh, the the private dining room at um, at uh, Rumpus Room, and I can keep going on and on and on. It's yes. a significant a part of our business. So. Air traffic control, mayday, mayday. No, no, it's more like it's more like, juggling. It's like the circus. I feel like Barnum and Bailey oh. juggling. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that. Here's, no. hey, I, I was lucky enough to, to, to have my rehearsal dinner at Harbor House. So there, that's the captain's well, room. Listen, we're we're listen, a big fan. You, you could have gone anywhere. Uh -oh. And everybody knows David Caruso. And the fact that you chose one of our restaurants, look at that. Yay. <laughs> the man himself. So fun. And congratulations, by the way. Thank you. So um, I, I know that they're, like you said, it's similar to the restaurants. You're taking your time, you're, you're doing your due diligence, you're surveying staff. Um, but in terms of events, um, do you see any temporary normal for what to be expected for events in the short term? I mean, it seems like some things might be on the books happening the end of summer, but um, do, you, do you have any idea of what that temporary normal might look like at these event venues? So I go back to the, to the, the principles and the values, and I go back to the mindset that we need to have. And you know this because you're, you're in the same business, right? You know this right. world. We're, we're asked right now to be flexible and adaptable. We got to try to figure it out. We always, as an organization, have figured out how do we get to yes? How do we make our guests happy? And at the same time, we're also juggling limited space and the compression of all of this year's bookings, who right. many of them have rebooked. And by the way, the landscape is changing. Guaranteed, you know, what's going on today with the announcement of, of State Fair? Everybody's like, well, what does that mean? That's August. So now I had rebooked for August. Now I need to rebook again. And here's the answer. We will figure it out with you. Right. It's not perfect. It's going to be messy. You may not get exactly the date you want, but we're trying to work in any way possible. It's just not, a, there is no perfect science here. So right. we're putting forth best effort. We're committed to hospitality and making people, we, you know, we don't look at a BEO, a banquet event order as a piece of paper that says, here's the event we're going to do. No, it's your wedding. It's the most important day of your life. It's important to you. It's important to us. It's not a function sheet. It's someone's life. And, and we, what we need to think about is every day to make sure that we keep this personal. Not that we're acting out our job and delivering food and pouring wine. No, no. We are privileged that they've chosen us for a corporate event, for a graduation, for a, for a nonprofit, for, I mean, and we have so many, there are like hundreds of plays uh, hovering over the, so it's, it's trying, it's, it's difficult, it's imperfect. Um, but we are unrelenting and we. If you think you are, it's a recipe for, for, for disaster. Right. You can never be everything to everyone. But here's the thing. If we have anybody in this process that isn't thrilled with how things evolved, when I get a few more bullets in my gun or when I have the tools at my disposal, I will earn them back. We will earn them back. We are not going to make any any people think that we are not living up to our values or to what we believe in and how we've built our business. We didn't get here for 27 years by, by not caring. You know, we, in our tenants, the word care comes up every single time. We care about employees. We care about our guests. We care about our vendors and our stakeholders. We care about our community. And by the way, right now we need to care about, the solvency of our business. We right. have to, and I, we have to reemerge. I got employees. I got obligations. I have an, I have a lot of responsibility to a lot of different people. That is my goal. Right. And I love that you say it's not just a function sheet. There's so many important things to take away from that. And I think that people will just really um, feel grateful for you even uh, mentioning all of that caring concern that's going into you and your team's thoughts. This is the grain exchange. 
uh, that we just love and is Ram such Dom an iconic. Location. Look at that, so iconic. You know, you guys also recently um, did a lot of renovating at the ICC, another great, great, great location. And, you know, of course, down at Discovery World, I mean, for many people that are watching that might not have seen the location of Discovery World, I mean, look at where it's located, people. So, right, so like the floating on the water. So the building on the top is the pilot house. It's a 360 degree circular event space. And then behind it, sort of in that little gap is the um, is the pavilion room, which is a large room that uh, that's the pavilion room that got added on this uh, about two years ago and has really helped the museum because this is a partnership with Discovery World. It's not only our event space. We we literally have a, an arrangement with them where they use during the day for a lot of their exhibits and a lot of their activities and we share a lot of our of our proceeds to the to discovery world to help them and they are just like the best partners the so best great love it so definitely as i said earlier check out bartoladas.com for lots of information about their restaurants about their event venues, other happenings. You guys have such great events throughout a normal calendar year. Um, so bartolatas.com is the place to see wine dinners and all kinds of different things that happen, which I just love. One of the things I wanted to touch on before we wrap up our conversation, um, you know, kind of like State Fair, we all have some, and uh, you know, assumptions and things that are swirling around in our minds about the DNC. Um, what are what are you thinking in terms of what possibly might happen in August regarding the DNC? Well, again, you know, um, the mayor, um, the Bucks, the host committee, the DNC, um, visit Milwaukee, Peggy William Smith. I mean, have been out there tirelessly. You know, MMAC, all these people, part of our community of of, of of Milwaukee are working tirelessly. And as a city, we're at a tipping point. And it's so tragic that with all the work that's put into getting this to really show the jewel that is Milwaukee and, and our South Southeastern Wisconsin region, that this is somewhat even a question mark. I, know. Um, I, I, I hope it happens. Um, anything we can do to showcase our city um, is going to be valuable to help us rebuild our city and get us back on our feet. Um, I have, I have confidence in all the the players of the city, you included, David, to promote great events and exciting things in the city. Um, we just will rebuild this, but the DNC, um, it's hard to really tell. You know, um, they've scaled it back. Uh, I watched uh, Peggy. Uh, Peggy William Smith's uh, presentation of Visit Milwaukee yesterday, and so sweet. She created a hospitality award named after my brother Joe. I know. I love that. I and, saw that, and I just and, almost got teary eyed. And she asked me to be uh, part of the uh, part of the you know the committee, part of like or you know delivering the right. award or in some capacity. She's developing a committee or something. I'm not sure exactly, but but. Um, but it was one of the most touching things. And again, these are people that make a difference. These are these are the people that make Milwaukee great. And um, so I hope we're all fighting to get the DNC here. We hope this thing passes. We'll I, see. I, I we'll just, see. You know, I, I, I live in the world of I, I hope for the best and I make whatever plans I can. And I just we're just going to go with it. Whatever happens. Milwaukee will make it great. We will show whoever does come, we will show them what we're made of. I love that. Whoever's here, it's going to be good for them. That's for sure. I love some of the other fun things. I mean, I, I actually was like in a hotel room somewhere and actually saw this on the talk and was like, hey, there he is looking good in yeah. his sharp pink shirt. I love mm -hmm. some of the fun you've had. Jimmy Kimmel on the talk. So many great things. And hey, my friend, I wanted to say congratulations. I know that the James Beard honor is a big one, something that you've received um, and also your brother and other people, I believe, in your organization a couple of times. But most recently, a nominee for? Um, so Best Restaurant Tour U.S. Awesome. 
Awesome. Uh, so outstanding. It's called Outstanding Restauranter USA. Um, my brother and I had been nominated the last three or four years. Um, we were starting to joke that we we're going to become the Susan Lucci's of the uh, of the of the Beard <laughs> Awards. Um, so um, this is one that's a little bit bittersweet, um, but I think it's it's one of those awards that is as much an award for the leader of the business, but it's really about the organization, what the organization as a whole has done. And uh, bittersweet for me, um, I would have loved to have my brother get a Beard Award. Um, he deserved it then, he deserves it now. Um, you know, when, when we started, Milwaukee was not the city it was. And to my brother's credit, and I can brag a little bit here, um, <laughs> you know, you know, back in the day, we when we opened, we had, you know, Mater's, Carl Roches, a Grenadier, um, Sanford's, and that was kind of about it. Um, and to Joe's vision, he saw this little restaurant in Wauwatosa. Then he identified Lake Park, uh, this beautiful place. And we were thinking Italian. I said, Joe, let's do French. And he's like, why? We're Italian. I'm like... But are we only going to do Italian? And I said, I worked, in, I worked in France. I spent years in France. So let's do, but they're going to think it's expensive. And I said, no, rustic French country food is like rustic Italian food. Just let's do, you know, and he's like, okay, let's do this. And, you know, and when I think back, you know, I remember going in and signing, we were like in our twenties signing this SBA loan for like wow, seven figure number. And we were kids. We had no clue what we were doing. And all of a sudden, we said, like, do you realize that we personally guaranteed all this? And he's like, yeah, I know. What are you thinking? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, yes. So, you know, to my brother's credit, um, his vision is um, um, his legacy. We we must build on that legacy. And so while it's a great award and, and, and it's nice, um, it's it's for the organization and for sure it will always there he is right there again. Um yes. it will always be um it will always be um my brother and me. Well, we are are rooting for you and everybody and I have to tell you I can tell you for sure that people that were listening today have a, a, a in some way a different impression of who you are as a person and as a leader and I am I'm so happy that DC Live gave everyone a chance to kind of see the inside of Paul in some way, and more so to learn about all the restaurants and event places that we miss so much. I'm gonna see you and Maria soon on that patio. I know you, it. You bet. But my you bet. friend, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for including me, David. This was awesome. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. It's raining. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for the tour earlier. Awesome. That was really great. Say hi to your family and we'll talk do. to you again soon. Thank Good you, time. sir. Yep. Bye-bye. Oh my gosh. I could have gone on and on and on. That was so much fun and just such a special time to spend with Paul. But I'm excited because coming up, Scratch Ice Cream. I am bringing in one of the dudes from Scratch Ice Cream. Justin is going to be joining us down from the collective on Farwell. Justin, how's it going? Good, Dave. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm happy to see you. And you know, I have to say, when I when I thought about who should be talking about their cool business uh, as we approach summer on DC Live, I immediately thought of you guys at Scratch Ice Cream. I just think it's so awesome what you're up to. But I want to make sure that people know, first and foremost, you're only one of three of the dudes. Uh, Correct. Our, our other friends are Ryan and uh, Dusty, who also run Scratch Ice Cream with you, correct? Yep. So, uh, yeah, Ryan's my older brother. He was the founder. And then Dusty is, is our other partner, who uh, who's also one of the main people that uh, kind of started the biz. So. so cool. So I'm just so curious because I can't even remember the first time that I tried it. To be honest with you, I think that I was walking down the aisles of Metcalf and got a free sample and it turned me into a, a lifelong fan. Uh, oh, but yeah. I was oh, yeah. so curious, how did this come to be? Here you guys are eating ice cream, but tell us how uh, it came to be. What's the story? Quite the story. It's a long story, but, uh, you know, back in the day around 2015, my, 
my old brother Ryan was working uh, at Yo Mama Frozen Yogurt, actually, as a manager. Um, our aunt and uncles, Becky and Scott Berger, own Frozen Yogurt in Tosa. And, uh, you know, one day my uncle came to Ryan asking if he wanted to start making ice cream. So him and him and my brother started coming up with recipes. And, you know, after a while, things weren't working out the way that they thought. But, you know, Ryan stuck with it. You know, he did a lot of reading, you know, came up with a few good recipes. So my aunt and uncle gave him the capital to get started. And then, you know, a year or so later, wow. Dusty came along. And then back in 2018, I came along. I mean, wow. it's been a long journey. But, uh, yeah, we started selling first first shop was the yo mama frozen yogurt store and then you know we've grown to you know quite a few different grocery stores around the area and you know now we got a lot of things in the works that we're that we're looking forward to this summer so that is so cool i love that and so neat that it's a, a not only a, a family story but also including your aunt and uncle too that's so great and i love that at yo mama because i'm a toasty guy so you are at the um collective on farwell right now is where you're talking to us from yeah. and this is one yeah. of your locations now like you said you could you can get scratch ice cream at yo mama still in tosa this is your location yeah. at the collective um, and the collective, for those of us that don't know, is kind of a, a, a one location with a bunch of different food vendors, right? Correct. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of different food um, food vendors here, but uh, it's kind of kind of sad that there's nobody here to eat it. Um, uh, you know, they still can take out and whatnot, but yeah, there's about six different vendors here, and yeah, we're we're very excited about this place. Can't wait for it to get back open. Yes, and another exciting part is the um, food truck park that has so many fans. It's on South 6th Street, yeah. Milwaukee. It's the Zocolo Food Truck Park. And this is where your cool, super cool retro camper is, right? Yeah, we love it. I mean, it's it's great. You know, you get to enjoy the, the good weather when it's there and enjoy some good ice cream. And, you know, also same place as here, a lot of good, you know, good good restaurants and good food trucks there as well. So, I mean, it's, wow. it's a blast at that. I love that place. That's so cool. So you also have some exciting new news that our viewers are gonna hear for the first time on DC Live right now, which is about another location, right? Another location, yeah, coming this summer, actually, hopefully this weekend, but uh, we're gonna have another food truck, same one as Zoclo, but it's gonna be at The Rock in Franklin. So if you guys are on the south side, come on to The Rock and, you know, they got a lot of good stuff going there too. So I mean, it, it's it's going to be crazy That's, this summer, hopefully. Wow, the Rock is the next place in Franklin. That's yeah. awesome. Another food truck. Now, tell me about the ingredient. Oh, first of all, I I got I was lucky enough to get my um box oh, yeah, of ice cream go. dropped off last night. It was so good. I'm telling you, I was just eating up all the different flavors with my neighbors. This is the um salted caramel waffle cone oh my god my newest yes. favorite so while i um add to my quarantine 19 and add another pound or two um tell us about the ingredients in the ice cream in general yeah so in general yeah i mean we make as many homemade ingredients as we can and so that salted caramel that you're eating that's homemade caramel in there and then you know the oh. The, the the base recipe that we use is is homemade that my brother came up with and uh, we make our own homemade brownies our own homemade cookie dough our own homemade fudge pretty much anything that we can make homemade we do so that's all made in shop um, and it's and I gotta tell you small batch philosophy it's it's we make everything pretty much on a, a burner with one pot maybe two pots. You know, we make everything. we make our brownies in small convectional ovens. Um, you know, the cookie dough is just made in small <laughs> mixers right now. Um, so really, everything is small batch to the max. You really can't do it. It's like you make it in your kitchen, but we're making it on a you know incredible scale right now. And it's oh my god, a lot of work, but we wouldn't want it any other way. You know. And you can tell, I mean, you can definitely tell the ingredients are right on. Um, so you were, you, you told us that we can find you in grocery stores also, right? Yeah, correct. So I mean, around here on the east side of Milwaukee, we're in uh, beans and barley, kappas, um, 
you know, we're on Sendix, Downer, um, and then we're Searmac, Walker's Point, Metcalf's, and Tosa, Outpost, all the Outpost stores, Woodman's. Um, also got recently just a full vegan line too at Outpost. So, if, yeah. you know, if you're not comfortable eating the the normal ice cream, then make sure to you know go get yourself some vegan ice cream. So. And they can find everything on your website at scratchicecream.com where they can find your uh, different locations, grocery stores that you're at, flavors. One of the favorite things that I love that you guys are doing now is the quarantine care packages. Wow, this is awesome. Um, I think that in the quarantine care package, you can choose six pints and 18 par-baked cookies. Uh, $45 for delivery and $40 for pickup. Um, I think the pickup for this location though is where? So it's it's at our production facility on Farwell Avenue. It's actually kind of right across the street from um, Pizza Shuttle, but you know we, we don't have an actual storefront where customers can come in and out of. So we ask them to park near an alley or you know park near an apartment building so that we can just come on and deliver them straight to their car. It's so very cool. easy, you know. So cool. And you guys do special events too. This is something that we did together for uh, the Summerfest Big Gig Dress Rehearsal, but special events I know you guys do. You also have a fun uh, cart that gets around for events. Is that true? Yeah, we still got that bike. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of events, catering, weddings, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that bike, we try and haul around anywhere that we can. Any you know any place that people let us really, um, it's fun you know selling out of that thing and yeah any pretty much anywhere in the city that we can we can go and sell ice cream we will. That's so great. Well, Justin, hey, I appreciate you joining me from the collective. I, I'm a super fan of your ice cream. I'm gonna finish my pint when we're off air here. But say hello to the other dudes. And I will. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck coming up in Franklin and everything coming this summer. I know it's been a, a rough time to kind of be adapting, but you guys are, are staying strong and sticking through it. And the things that you have already done on your journey to here are just incredible. So I appreciate you taking the time today. And we're, we're all cheering for Scratch Ice Cream. Thanks, David. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. Take you care. Too, David. All right, take care. Bye bye. Oh gosh, that was so great. Paul Bartolotta, Scratch Ice Cream. Oh my God, what else do you need? I just wanted to give uh, a big shout out to see if those of you watching make sure that you vote. Best of, we're looking for votes. Best event planner in Milwaukee for Milwaukee Magazine. You can easily find Milwaukee Magazine online and take a vote for Dynamic Events by David Caruso. We appreciate it. And coming up tomorrow, the one and only superhero of downtown, Beth Warwick is joining me. Same time tomorrow, Friday. Beth and I talking all things downtown, two o'clock on Facebook, and I cannot wait. She is so fabulous. So I can't wait to talk to Beth tomorrow. I will see all of you. Thank you to Paul. Thank you to Justin and the other dudes at Scratch Ice Cream, everyone at the Bartolotta Restaurants Group. And I will see all of you. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the comments, likes, and shares. And we'll see you tomorrow with Beth. Have a good afternoon, everybody. DC Live will be back tomorrow. Bye-bye.